Hi and welcome back. This is the third part in our series on cell injury. In the first part, we discussed what is cell injury, its pathogenesis and mediators of cell injury. In the second part, we discussed the various reversible type of cell injuries along with necrosis. If you haven't watched those yet, do watch them now. The link is available in the description and is also now available on the screen. Now that you have watched them, we will move on to our third part. In this third episode, we will be discussing another type of irreversible cell injury that is apoptosis along with some changes which occur after cell injury and death that is gangrene and pathologic calcification. Okay, enough of introduction. Now let's move into the subject. Apoptosis is defined as coordinated and internally programmed cell death. It is defined as coordinated and internally programmed cell death. Because it is internally programmed kind of cell suicide, there is no accompanied inflammation or collateral tissue damage. There are no external inflammatory cells or accompanying inflammatory reaction and also there is no destruction of innocent bystander cells. There is no collateral tissue damage. This apoptosis can be physiologic as in embryogenesis where certain tissues or structures which disappear after a certain period of time or it can be pathologic as in cell death in tumors when exposed to chemotherapeutic agents or like cell death by cytotoxic T cells in immune mechanisms such as graft versus host disease that is transplant rejection. Coming to the morphologic features of apoptosis, apoptosis may involve a single cell or a small cluster of cells. The cell is shrunken to a mass of intensely eosinophilic cytoplasm with shrunken organelles. The cell is shrunken to a mass of intensely eosinophilic cytoplasm with shrunken organelles, kind of mummified cell. There is also condensation of chromatin leading to pycnosis. There can also be cytoplasmic blebs, small projections from the surface called blebs. There is also formation of membrane bound near spherical bodies containing cell organelles. Membrane bound near spherical bodies containing cell organelles which are present around the cell called apoptotic bodies. Membrane bound near spherical bodies containing cell organelles are formed around the cell and this is called apoptotic bodies. Unlike necrosis, no acute inflammatory reaction is seen here. Phagocytosis of apoptotic bodies occur and this phagocytosis is done by macrophages, but this occurs at a varying speed. There is no acute inflammatory reaction. Okay, these are the features of apoptosis. Coming to the mechanism of apoptosis, it is divided into two phases, initiation and execution. The initiation of cell into apoptosis or nudging of the cell into the suicide mode that is apoptosis happens when 
there is withdrawal of some cell surviving signals like hormones or growth factors or due to some cell injury agent like heat or radiation. This initiation of cell into apoptosis can take one of the two pathways the intrinsic or mitochondrial pathway or extrinsic or cell surface death receptor pathway. In the intrinsic or mitochondrial pathway there is a release of pro-apoptotic molecules or the molecules which cause apoptosis that is pro-apoptotic molecules from the mitochondria. This happens due to increased permeability of mitochondria. Mitochondria contains a protein called cytochrome C. When there is increased permeability of mitochondria, this cytochrome C escapes into the cytoplasm and this triggers the apoptotic mechanism. And this pathway is called intrinsic pathway. Coming to the extrinsic or cell death receptor initiated pathway, here the apoptosis is initiated by activation of cell death receptors which are present on the cell membrane. Example of a cell death receptor is tumor necrosis factor receptor type 1. So, either ways through extrinsic or intrinsic pathway, the initiation occurs and the apoptotic process is started. Coming to the execution phase, the end product of both the pathways, that is, the extrinsic cell death receptor mediated pathway and the intrinsic mitochondrial pathway. The end product of both the pathways is enzyme belonging to the caspase family. The end product is say some enzyme belonging to the caspase family. Only the type varies. In mitochondrial pathway caspase 9 is activated and in death receptor pack pathway caspase 8 and 10 are activated. Either ways, only the type varies. Anyways, the enzyme of caspase family is activated and the execution phase is mediated by this enzyme of caspase family. This caspase causes cleavage of proteins and DNA fragmentation. This culminates the apoptotic process transforming the cell into apoptotic bodies as we saw earlier and these apoptotic bodies are removed by macrophages. We saw that in morphologic features. Okay, that is apoptosis for you and now we will move on to the next section that is changes after cell death. Now the cell has died and what are the changes which happen after cell death? We will be discussing two changes here, gangrene and pathologic calcification. Gangrene is defined as necrosis with superadded putrefaction, that is death followed by decay, necrosis with superadded putrefaction. There are three types of gangrene, dry, wet and gas. Dry gangrene mostly occurs in distal parts of limb, the parts which are farthest from blood supply, the peripheries of the limb. Because of scarce blood supply, and because of scarcity of nutrition, even bacteria find it difficult to survive there. It is in these areas that dry gangrene occurs. The typical is the peripheries or distal parts of limb. 
this type of gangrene spreads slowly upwards up to a point where there is adequate blood supply and here at this point there is a clear line of demarcation the affected area the affected area that is the area which is distal to the line of separation the affected area is dry and shrunken and dark black dry shrunken and dark black just like a mummy coming in the famous mummy series of movies of brandon fraser you must have watched it so the area looks dry and shrunken and black just like mummies this color black is given by iron sulfide which is formed by action of hydrogen sulfide which is produced by the bacteria on hemoglobin coming to wet gangrene in exact contradiction to the dry gangrene which we just now saw okay, in exact contradiction to dry gangrene this wet gangrene occurs in moist tissues stuffed with blood moist tissues stuffed with blood example bowel lungs mouth cervix etc the affected part is stuffed with blood which favors the rapid growth of putrefactive bacteria unlike our previous version that is dry gangrene here the area is stuffed with blood and this favors the growth of bacteria and this can lead to septicemia also here this type of gangrene spreads and there is no clear line of demarcation the affected area is swollen putrid rotten and dark swollen putrid rotten and dark coming to the third type that is gas gangrene this is considered as a special form of wet gangrene it is a special type of wet gangrene the only difference being the presence of gas forming clostridia family of bacteria the affected area is swollen painful, foul smelling and crepitant, crepitant meaning a crackling or bubbling noise or the feeling of gas underneath when palpated, it is called crepitant. Okay, that is all regarding gangrene, now let us move on to the next change after death that is pathologic calcification. Pathologic calcification is defined as deposition of calcium in tissues other than teeth and bone. Deposition of calcium in teeth and bone is normal. But deposition of calcium in tissues other than teeth and bone is referred to as pathologic or abnormal calcification. There are two types, dystrophic and metastatic dystrophic refers to calcification of dead and degenerated tissues with normal calcium metabolism and normal serum calcium level that is here the particular tissue is dead and degenerated and this calcium deposits over it in spite of normal calcium metabolism and normal serum calcium level but in contrary to this in metastatic calcification calcium deposits in apparently normal tissues and here the problem is with the calcium metabolism and 
calcium level. There is deranged calcium metabolism or abnormal calcium metabolism and higher level of calcium in serum. That is hypercalcemia. Histologically, in both these types, the deposited calcium salts appear as basophilic irregular granular clumps which may be seen intracellularly or extracellularly or both. Coming to the examples on both sides, the example of dystrophic pathologic calcification is calcification in dead tissues like caseous necrosis or liquefactive necrosis or calcification in degenerated tissues like old scars, atromas. You might be knowing this. The atromas or atromatous plaques occurring in coronary arteries, they also sometimes get calcified. The example of metastatic calcification is the ones occurring in deranged calcium metabolism like hyperparathyroidism, some bony destructive lesions like multiple myeloma, etc. With this, we will wind our series on this topic that is cell injury. We will meet again soon in a discussion on some other topic on pathology. So keep the channel subscribed. As usual, PDF notes are available for download in the description. For further help or interactive classes, you can mail me. Until we meet in another video, thanks for watching. Bye.